My name is Robert Osborne, and I'll be reading an excerpt from my short story, Children. Martin the Neighborhood Cat was originally named Sambo. Nelson knows this because some of the younger kids still call the cat by that name. They yell in the street under a late March sun. If Nelson is around inspecting his gutters or scouting out locations on his property for the new garden he would like to plant, then the older kids correct their siblings. His name is Martin. They glance sheepishly at Nelson and offer an apologetic smile. They walk away from him until they reach some invisible event horizon, and then they break out laughing. Martin Nelson calls to the cat, who arches his back and swishes his tail, his purr audible long before he reaches Nelson's extended hand. That's right, Nelson says. I'm your people. One day, Nelson comes home to find his wife, Dahlia, and, his sister, and her sister, Betty, sitting at the kitchen table. Colorful brochures depicting happy children and benevolent adults are spread across the surface. Where's Harris, he asks. Dahlia tells him Harris is out playing ball with his friends at the rec center. The proximity to basketball courts, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, tennis courts, and a movie theater is one of the reasons they moved into the house two months ago. The neighborhood also has four coffee shops, a fish store, a cheese shop, and two wine bars, both with Edison bulbs hanging from their ceilings. Betty is eyeing the brochures, her body cocked away from the jumble of smiling children as if, as if they're ex exerting some kind of force. She runs her hand through the length of her blonde hair and lets out a long sigh. They've decided to take the plunge, Dahlia says. It was too much. By too much, Betty means the expense was too much, the fighting was too much, the planned sex was too much, the heartbreak was too much. For Nelson and Dahlia, it had been easy. One try and one kid born 16 years ago. Nelson goes to the fridge and pulls out a beer. It feels right that he has a drink on a Saturday afternoon in the first house he's ever owned. Do you know how your parents decided, Betty asks him? I think they just went to the local agency, Nelson says with a shrug. My sense is that it was like going to the animal rescue and picking out the one you liked. Nelson's sister was that choice. He thinks of her long limbs, tight smile, and distrustful eyes. It couldn't have been that easy, Dahlia says. Nelson smiles tolerantly at his wife, shrugs, and takes a sip of his beer. She's probably right, but he imagines in the late 70s in the Bronx, it may have just been exactly like this. He pictures rows and rows of black infants in their cribs, death tuff, dense tufts of hair on their heads, an earth palette of a thousand shades. We're thinking about Korea or maybe Ukraine, Betty says. So many needy babies, it's hard to decide. Those are long trips, Nelson offers. Different cultures, a lot of expense. What choice do we have, Betty asks. There's simply no easy way to get a baby here. Nelson and Dahlia have accepted several drink invitations for their neighbors since they moved in. The offers seem partly driven out of neighborliness and partly out of the novelty they represent. They're used to this. They know they make a striking couple with Dahlia's lanky Nordic beauty and Nelson's dark, roped physique. Did you play ball? You guys go to school together, Rich Kelso had asked while shaking a margarita for them both. The panels in Rich's den and even the bar cart were made from cherry wood. The lit fireplace suggested an intimacy that Nelson hadn't felt. Several generations of Kelso's lined the walls and mantles, dignified and righteous. Nah, just recreationally. We met in grad school, in the library. Nelson took satisfaction uh, in telling that little white lie. They had met in grad school, but it was at a bar. Dahlia grinning at him as she threw back a shot. She had just finished her last exam. Nelson still had a year to go. Wow, that's something. You two sure look like the homecoming king and queen together. Thanks, Dahlia said. She gave Nelson a cautionary glance while he raised his glass to her in a toast. Drinks with the Grahams a week earlier had put her on edge. Missy Graham had asked, how did you find this one? So handsome. The relationship always required some level of explanation. Dahlia used to come down to the hood to watch some of us play ball, Nelson said with a wink. Oh my. Yeah, I caught her eye. Dahlia's own eyes flashed with anger and warning, but she smiled and said, he did. Later that night, when they, were sit when they were getting ready for bed, she said, give anyone else that bullshit answer again, I'm gonna kick your ass. I just give the people what they want. But Rich Kelso had wisely dropped the subject and handed them both their margaritas and sweating tumblers. They talked about grad school, the neighborhood, their kids. Rich and his wife had both gone to Ivy League schools and they were only too happy to discover they had that in common. Towards the end of the evening, Mary looked pensive and wrung her hands. She glanced at Rich who nodded to her in encouragement. You two are so lovely, and we just wanted to say that we're sorry about the cat. We should have known better. We didn't give the name any thought, but we should have. 
We're all sorry, everyone in the neighborhood. We meant no offense. Nelson looked them both in the eye with a tight smile, utter the most important phrase you need to know if you're a Black person trying to get by in certain social situations. None taken. 